Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Wednesday, May 10, 2023. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? We got a lot of stuff on the docket today. It was a wild rodeo type situation on the street of walls. Not to mention, it's also what we call a bonanza for Inside the Numbers and Inside the Numbers live room members. We'll get to that later. That's also called a tease. Let's start with this. What follows low volatility or no volatility? Volatility. The title of last night's video was Volatility Follows No Volatility. We'll get to the daily chart in a moment. What happened this morning was at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the release of a data point called CPI comes and the market has what we call a goose operation. They send the futures up, they get to a really, really important place, and the thieves in the morning got the trade, took the deal, left the traders waiting for the opening bell to do the same thing at the altar. It turned into a gap in crap. Then it turned into a wild rodeo type situation. However, what we'll say is inside the numbers and live room members caught the low for a whopper of a trade two times, some of them three times. I'm going to explain later. What's jumping off the page on the daily chart? Well, here's what we have to notice. They had an opportunity today to go all the way down. They could have filled this gap down here. They could have done anything they wanted today. They had it already set up with the gap and crap. The sellers could have come out of the woodwork and pushed price down anywhere they wanted with enough volume entering the tape on the sell side. However, what actually happened, when you look at everything I talk about each and every day, we talk about each and every day, whether it's in the live room, whether it's in these videos, whether it's in the course I teach, what did they do? They took a test, they made a test around the vicinity of a breakup candle low. The low here is 408.64, low of day 408.87, and they had a rocket ride back in the other direction to do what? Close back above the 20 period moving average. We have to look at that as bullish behavior, not just because they bottomed out and reversed, but because there was a choice made, a choice not to do the bear case, but to just run a test and reverse the tape, shake everybody out who was chasing the market long, shaking out the traders that bought puts yesterday, they had covered at the open. Traders got whipsawed today to the nth degree. Not us, we'll get to that later. As a reminder, as we move toward the end of the week, we have two sessions left this week. They're eating time off the clock underneath the 100 period moving average. And if you look at what happened over the last three weeks, despite two of them testing this low point down here, at the end of the day, nothing happened. So they're just eating time off the clock if you take away, if you extract the daily noise. Looking around things using different time frames would have been nice for the bull case to get a complete reversal candle of the gap and crap. This is a half day chart. So the first candle was down. The next one tried to paint the tape, if you will, or paint the last candle, but they just couldn't close above. But wait, there's more. The 120 chart did, in fact, reverse the last breakdown candle and now they're working on the top end or the area from the 240 chart, same routine, just working toward the top of the candle. Above all the moving averages, the trend is your friend until she throws your shit out the window. Inside the numbers, interesting day today. As wild as it was on the tape, it was a pretty straightforward and easy day for traders inside the numbers and the live room. So we didn't have much on the board from an early thoughts perspective around zero dark 30 because we're waiting on the data release anyway. So why bother? So what I did was I waited till it was out. The data is out. Initial move is to goose the tape. 
first thing they do is make a run for the gap left open Monday. We talked about that one yesterday. That was on the board yesterday for Inside the Number members for 1280. If they were going to push above and stay above 41150, that was the place. Now they would work on 41385. This will come back into play later. So write that number on a small sticky note. This was kind of the right away stuff. So let's see how things developed as we come near 9 o'clock, half hour before the opening bell. What do we have? Well, now we have a bit of a squeeze operation on our hands this morning. But there's always a trade set up. So whether there's a long, there's a short, we have to wait with patience. And we're just citing a bunch of pies in the face for the put buyers yesterday. Where's overhead resistance? 414.75 to 415.50. Let that register for a second. 414.75. It's a zone that is magnetic and important. Since we think better in pictures, right of the vertical is today's activity. Here's an SPY five-minute chart. You don't see 41475 on the board because they didn't get there today. Or did they? Here's the pre-market. This is the Thebes in the morning. 915 candle, candle ending. 915, they get up to the place, right into the resistance zone, summarily rejected, and the rest is history from a short trade at a number perspective. The numbers are important, as are the thieves in the pre-market. You can see here, traders willing, interested, and able can take a short scalp with potential in the zone between 414.75 and 415.50 for a reaction back in the other direction. And here's what we say. If the thieves in the pre-market get to and react from 41475, it will change the risk and the trade, but not the importance of the numbers. Either way, they didn't do it during the regular session. What else do we have? There must be something else. Please tell me you had something else today. Well, 915, right on schedule, thieves in the morning, yada, yada. You know the situation. Now, because of developments in the pre market, 918, still before the opening bell, before they open for business. 413.85 is now our pivot. 413.85 is the horizontal line and the pivot. And here's what happened. They open the tape at 413.89. They run a test a little bit lower, take off, make it look like they're going to get to the next place, and then fall away. So we certainly had some traders that were buyers of the pivot trying to ride it up for a scalp with potential. That was fine until they got below. Once they got below, it opens the door for something else, doesn't it? Yeah, 9.39. Below 4.13.85 and staying there opens the door for 4.12.80. How you doing? Let's see what else we have. So we've got a gap and crap situation. We've got two-way pies in the face. 9.43. 4.11.50 to 4.11 and a quarter should be support. Let that register for a moment. 4.11.50 on the button. That low is, in fact, 411.50. It's not the gap. It's kind of a no man's land. Who's buying that number other than us? And look at that rocket ride immediately back in the other direction. Do you think we had some traders make profit there? And yes, we did. And they're real numbers, too. It's not like 50 bucks. It's not $200. It's thousands on these trades at times for some of the traders. But wait, there's more. Again, Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. I would like to point out another important post that may get your attention. 1043, about 41020 is important and can provide a bounce back. It's unfinished business from yesterday. This is after the rally, market came back down, what's the next place? Also, because we have a Rip it back in the other direction from a spike of the low routine. How do you feel about apples? How do you like them apples? 410.18 low, another rip back up in the other direction. But wait, there's more. Again, pause it, read them, go back to the chart to double check the work. What did I leave traders with long before they got there? How about 409.45? Below 410.20 opens a door for 409.45, the spike the low, and rip it back up in the other direction scenario once again. Now this one, they spike down to 409, give or take. However, look at that rip 
back up in the other direction. Spike the low, rip it back up in the other direction. If you have a number of importance below the former low, you're in what we call business. Already traders emailed me this afternoon that took this trade on their own. Nice job. Pause them, read them, double check the work. It was a know when to fold them kind of morning. That's how you keep the money in your pocket. What about stocks on the move? A little bit of a laundry list. Two hit their entry objectives. We'll take a look at bros. We'll take a look at COHR. First one, COHR getting a buzz cut at the opening bell. Unfortunately, it opened slightly below the first number, and then it ripped back up in the other direction. So the numbers worked. It's the manner in which from a COHR perspective, but you can see that rip. Nice deal. About bros. Bros came close, bounced away, did the deal, gave you the trade. Some traders did take this in the live room and got about a buck on a $29 stock. That's pretty good. That's about triple the minimum required base hit. And by the way, the numbers work. What's going on in Camp IWM? Same gap in crap, however, finished up on the day about half a percent on par for the most part with the SPY. So there's no divergence. There's nothing to gain out of today's activity. They're still below all the moving averages, and the trend is your friend, and you know the rest. Flip side of things, my second favorite market leading indicator happens to be the folks down at the transportation department. We'll say the same thing. Below all the moving averages, the trend is your friend. And until they're back above the convergence of these moving averages on the daily chart, essentially we can use the term, and this is a technical term, write this one down, no dice. Weekly chart, your last line of defense for now is going to be this breakup candle low. Close a week below that price, and there's another leg lower on the way. Anything wrong with the Qs? No, they're still pushing higher, up over 1% today, double the S&P. There's nothing wrong above all these moving averages. The trend is your friend. You go over to the weekly chart. If I can do it again, weekly chart 2.0. And again, still trying to push into this and likely above 100 period moving average. Nothing has changed in the queues with all the daily back and forth stuff and the S&P, IWM, other markets, financials, all that stuff. Nothing has changed with the queues. Yes, the breadth is not the same as the composite. Yes, it's being led by a basket, a small basket of stocks that everybody under the sun owns. But the price is the absolute arbiter, and there's nothing wrong with the queues. Financials still weak below this trend line. They're just eating time off the clock. In fact, not only below the trend line, but also below all the moving averages. Again, trend is your friend until it's not. Weekly chart, last line of defense is the 100 period moving average. They tested it. They bounced off of it. Now they're back to it. Where do they close the week? If they close a week below the 100 period moving average, they're going to challenge last week's lows, and there's another leg lower on the way. You can see the writing on the wall in terms of market symmetry with what's going on here. This is a possibility, not necessarily yet a probability, but here's a bearish wedge after a move down, and symmetry would say you've got another move down at 28 bucks, give or take. Put that one in your pipe and smoke it. Let's yet again stay on the weekly chart for the smash mouth. Why? Because the 100 period moving average is it. As long as they stay above, this is a pullback in a continued uptrend with another leg higher on the way. Give up the 100 and specifically the 20 period moving average, and that's going to be called into question. They've already run some tests below, and they keep popping back up. That's important. That's the market's way of showing you that that's important. All you have to do is look, see what they did, forget about what they say, forget about what everybody says, just watch what they do, watch what happens. That tells the tale. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I am David Frost, my strategic forecast, Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.